Well, welcome back to Brilliant Fishing. I'm Jason Brilliant. I'm your host. And today, I just want to share a couple things uh, with you. Um, we're going to be talking today about our topic. is going to be spring outer banks, bull reds from the surf. And it's a type of fishing that I do not know a lot about, uh, but we're excited today to, to find out uh, more about how to target that type of fish. And uh, just wanted to say, though, if you're new here and you're watching um, or listening, as the case may be, uh, you can find us on YouTube, and that's where you're going to see the video version of this this uh, podcast. Uh, but we're also out there in an audio version uh, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, Podbean, and some others. Uh, but just check us out. If one platform or another works better for you, uh, just don't forget to subscribe, like, you know, comment, let us know where you're watching from, and um, if you guys have any additional comments or suggestions, just leave them, uh, you know, leave them in the comments down below if you're on YouTube or, uh, send us an email. You know, our, my contact information is listed down below and you're welcome to, uh, to reach out. Uh, if there's anything that you'd like to see on the podcast, like the guest that you think maybe would be appropriate for the show or, or whatever, uh, definitely reach out to us, uh, via email. So I appreciate recently the outpouring of, uh, support, the positive comments, the viewership. Um, you know, it seems like each of the podcasts that we've done have been uh, very well received. I appreciate uh, you all for for watching and listening and, and just uh, being a positive, you know, receiving those in a positive way. Today, we have the privilege of being here today with Mr. Glenn Allen. And we're going to be talking about, like I said, spring, outer banks, uh, bull reds from the surf. And so Glenn, it's kind of cool. So Glenn, I know him as a fellow angler, uh, fellow follower of Jesus. So Amen. Glenn and I both, uh, we've gone to church together for, I won't say how many years. <laughs> it's been a, a number while. of years. <laughs> Neither one of us are spring chickens here. <laughs> uh, we've gone to church together for a number of years and uh, both of us just really enjoy fishing. Although Glenn's type of fishing, he does a lot of saltwater fishing, a lot of surf fishing. And um, so I'm going to turn it over to Glenn. Just let him tell us a little bit about uh, what type of fishing is that he does mostly and uh, kind of how he got started in that. So. Okay. I'll be glad to. Thanks for having yeah, me, Jason. Absolutely. Glad but, we could do um, this. Uh, yeah. I was born in Edenton, North Carolina. I'll just kind of give you how I got to the Outer Banks. And uh, mm -hmm. so we moved here when I was three years old, but my grandparents lived in Edenton. So every year we take, when we go on vacation, we can visit them. Mm -hmm. And so in turn, we'd spend a night or two with them. And then instead of going to Myrtle Beach, we were going to the Outer Banks. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of that was camping at Oregon Inlet to start with because there was no Bonner Bridge, no Bass Night Bridge like we have now, the newer bridge. Mm -hmm. So we would camp and fish and just have a good time, you know. Mm -hmm. So Outer Banks is, is about all I've known as far as beach. Yes, I've mm -hmm. been to Myrtle Beach. but uh, <laughs> It's not uh, your thing. No, it's not my thing. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, and, and the... And it's really unique, the structure of the Outer Banks, you know, just being that you have uh, the strip of land. Uh, and our old, older son always said, you know, mm -hmm. how come the wind blows down here, Daddy, all the time? And I said, <laughs> well, we're 20 miles out in the ocean, son, you know. Mm -hmm. I said, the wind's going to blow. Mm -hmm. And um, For sure. But anyway, you got you, the way it's set up in, the, in Cape Point is the place, you know, for drum fishing in the spring. And the reality of that is because you got the Labrador current coming down from up north, the Gulf Stream coming up south, and they meet offshore of Cape Point. Well, this convergence of you got cold water and warm water, but in the spring, you start getting that southwest wind. Mm -hmm. You start put that pushes that that Gulf water or that warmer water up on the South Beach, mm -hmm. and this in progression, we think, as far as the people I talk to and all. That these fish they winter out in the Gulf Stream. I don't think they go real far south, you know. Mm -hmm. They'll just go out in that warmer water, and once that warm water starts coming in, mm -hmm. and we've caught drum as early as in March. You know, mm -hmm. the perfect time is late April, first of May. But anyway, you got this coming together, and I like let next. I haven't been yet this year. There's been mm -hmm. a few caught. I've got mm -hmm. friends down there that uh, mm -hmm. that I can, mm -hmm. you know. Stay Check in contact in with, with yeah. I know what's going on. Get the intel. But uh, next week, there's probably going to be three or four days of southwest wind, and it might be a good time to go. I don't know if it's going to quite come together or not. They've mm -hmm. had a lot of north wind. Mm -hmm. But that's the 
that's the whole scenario. Okay. It's set, it sets up like that, and mm-hmm. then those fish will move in, and they might, and they're going to hang south of the point until that water temperature, the magic water temperature, is 60 degrees. Really? They like Once 60. it gets 60 degrees, yeah. And they're going to, and, but they're going to hang south of the point. We always say south beach is south of the point, north beach is north of the point. They're going to mm-hmm. hang down there. But once that temperature starts getting up on the north beach in the 60s, mm-hmm. they're going to take off. And when they start when they start clearing the point, mm-hmm. you better be there because the mm-hmm. migration is going to be pretty quick at that point. They're going to Chesapeake Bay, Oregon Inlet, going back in Pamico Sound okay. up there. So they're going to they're going to round the point and take off. You know, not that you can't mm-hmm. have a couple of weeks of it, and we've had a month of it or more. You know, at times, I mean, if it starts early, you might get March, mm-hmm. April, and into May. You know, mm-hmm. with that type of stuff, but. Nope. Just, Go ahead. just to be clear, though, uh, now you're talking about the point. Uh, I think most people, when we say the point, know what we're talking about. But it's the, the you're talking about the point on, at the bottom of Hatteras Island, uh, near. Uh, It'd actually be at Buxton. At Buxton. At Buxton. Okay. At, at Hatteras Village is uh is the Hatteras Inlet down there. Okay. So the but you got the southern beach that's mm-hmm. gonna come up and then the northern beach comes down mm-hmm. and they all meet there at Buxton at, at okay. Cape Lighthouse at the lighthouse. Okay. Where the lighthouse is. Where the lighthouse is. Yeah. Right. Now you do have to have a beach permit to go out, you know. Okay. So that comes through the park service. You can go on their mm-hmm. website and get a permit and get a weekly or an annual. Okay. So it doesn't matter on that. Okay, good, um, yeah. So if you're going down for just a week, you know, buy a week permit. If you're going down more than that, mm-hmm. I'd just recommend buying an annual. Buy you an know. annual. Okay, good. And so that, I'll put all, for those of you who are watching this on YouTube, I'll I'll show the map on the screen and you can mm-hmm. see where we're talking about. But yeah. That'd be good. Mm-hmm. Now, and, and I talk about uh, 60 degrees is the magic water temperature. Mm-hmm. Red drum tackle they have on their resources on their website you can go mm-hmm. to their resources and there's Rutgers uh, satellite imagery and it will give you what the surface temperature is up and down that area okay. through there oh. so you can look and you can see you can see that water coming a lot of okay. times that warm water the only thing bad about it is if you've got a lot of cat- cloud cover it won't pick it up so you you have to have clear mm-hmm. days I looked this morning and it didn't show very good images of okay, anything. But of the I mean, it just. But there really? was some. There has been some warm water. There is warm water there. It's okay. not far, you know. So mm-hmm. it's just a matter of time coming up. And um, okay. so anyway, but if I had to pick it, if if I had to pick a time to be there for the big reds, and we're talking about forty inch fish, citation fish. Okay. I mean they'll they'll be in that forty to fifty pound range, you know. Wow. It would be the last week of April, the first week of May. If you had two weeks to dedicate to drum fishing, mm-hmm. you'll catch one during that time. You right. know. So, I'll, mm-hmm. I say one. There there could be a lot, you know, but if you right. hang with it. But at the same time, Jason, I mean, you look at it. I mean, you right. go out there and I, I ho- I'm holding that rod for hours, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm sitting there and I said, what did I do this for? I said, this is crazy. Mm-hmm. You know? And then by that time, one picks it up, and you land him, and then you get a picture of him. Mm-hmm. Of course, they're all release fish. Right. Um, then you kind of say, That's, this is the reason I do it. It's this passion. I got this yeah. passion, you know. That, and uh, it's just a wonderful area. And I mean, it's, the, point, the point is an area beauty, yeah. you can see the sunrise in the morning over the water, coming up over the water, and see it set in the water on the... Right. West side, talking it's about sunrise, and I mean we're gonna have a real sunrise this Sunday, aren't we? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it would be uh, uh, Easter amen. Sunday, Resurrection amen Sunday. Yeah, yeah, but that's cool. I mean, I love being out there. You know, you get out there, and even I mean, it's non-fishing related, but you know, when the when sun goes down, because you're so far from all yeah. the light pollution, you can just see the Milky Way, see oh, all those God. stars, yes. and I I just I remember my first time out there just. Just standing there with my mouth hanging open, and like I had no idea there were that many stars. I know it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful man, corner of the creation out there. Shooting stars and, and yep. everything else, you know. But yeah, yeah, and and we'll talk about technique and all that. But mm-hmm. let, let's just start with maybe. So what you want to do is south beach fishing. They're going to be mm-hmm. on the south beach this time to of start year. With. You okay. get up to the very tip of the point. You start that water temperature is going to change drastically a lot of times, you know. So I'm not saying that you can't. As we get into the more of the season, I mean, late 
late April, 1st of May, mm-hmm. then yeah, they'll round the point some. You might catch them right up on the point. But mostly this time of year, they're going to be on that south side. Mm-hmm. So what we're going to do, and current, that southwest wind creates current. Mm-hmm. And drum love current. You know, they okay. feed into that current. Really? You know? Okay. So yeah, they're going to come up. They're going to come. They might yeah. come up the beach, you know, from south down mm-hmm. south i mean might come right. in and then run up the beach they might come straight in from offshore i've seen them do it different different times different years you know mm-hmm. one year sitting there and you could here's the birds coming and mm-hmm. you can see the drum they were busting water mm-hmm. you know i mean you know when you got 40 and 50 pound fish busting water that's and, a sight. Uh, talking about getting excited. Yeah. You know? I mean, oh, man, you know, <laughs> and everybody's sitting there. No, of course, we never we, get excited. <laughs> <laughs> no. Scream like a little uh, girl. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, you know, so basically our technique is if you if you have the best days are going to be current days. I'm not going to okay. say you can't catch them on flat water, but wind is not a bad thing, you know. Okay. If it's the end of that 15, say, 12, 14, 15, 16 mile an hour range, you know, you get mm-hmm. much over 18 miles an hour, you can get a lot of current mm-hmm. and you get, and it makes it a lot harder to throw too, because you're right. in, if the southwest wind, you're throwing straight into it, you know, right. and it makes it really tricky. That'd be hard know. to tend bottom too with. Yeah, you know. I mean, that gets you up where basically you're going to have to fish uh, seven or eight ounces and, mm-hmm. um, and, and I do, I mean, I, I don't fish eight ounces as much anymore. I just can't handle it, you know, mm-hmm. with my age and all. But mm-hmm. um, that said, there are guys that can mm-hmm. do it, you know. Yeah. And uh, so basically the technique is, I mean, there's a lot of beach there, you know, on the south side. And there's and I've already, I've been down one trip. Uh, and they're, this year set up, got a long south beach, you know. Mm-hmm. So what we'll do, we might go three or 400 yards, two or three or 400 yards below the point, south of the point, cast out. Then we start drifting, if the if the current set up right and all, we we'll start drifting from right to left, and it's going towards the point. We're mm-hmm. drifting towards the point, and you're going to stay. And and this is a big key right here, stay in front of your bait, because you mm-hmm. got a lot of people out there, a lot of lines out. If you don't watch out, you're going to have a mess. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're sitting there on your telephone, and I've seen guys do it. <laughs> I mean, you know, right. I mean. They're supposed to be down there fishing on on their telephone. Next thing you know, the line's down 75 yards, you know, down the beach. And we're, hey, buddy, you know, your line's down here. What? You know? Yeah, and I right. Said, I mean, you know, come on down here and get in front of your line. You know, let's yeah. fish. You right, know, yeah. That, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what you want to do. There, yeah. And the technique is, is, is follow it down, get to a point, you know, mm-hmm. maybe they're catching them in a certain zone. So mm-hmm. if you get past that point, you might want to crank in and walk back up and start all over again. Right. Now... Here's a tip right here. That bait's going to look good. Nothing's touched it. Take that bait off. Throw it off, Throw it away. Really? It, all the scent's done washed out of it. It's mm-hmm. washed out. Put a fresh bait on. Start all over again. I see guys, they'll look at their bait and they'll throw it back out. I said, man, that thing ain't got no scent to it at all. Drum are big scent fish. You know, okay. they... they uh, so they need to smell it. They, they'll smell it. They'll sight right. see it. But, you know, a lot of times the water's dirty and... Yeah, and it's rough, and you know they they're scenting. You know okay. they're they're feeding off a of scent. So wow. okay, yeah, no, that's good. Fresh good bait is a. We'll talk more about bait. Okay, um, sure. Well, just take us wherever you want to take us yeah. next. I don't know if that's tackle or rigs or bait or. Yeah, we're uh, going to talk a little bit more about, uh, and then we'll get into the rigs and all. But mm-hmm. there's guys down there that can cast eight ounces and a chunk of bait, 125 yards. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've heard people say, oh, they're casting father to that, 150, 200. No, they, they're not. Because mm-hmm. we've got, um, my son is, is a really good caster, mm-hmm. and he's probably right in the top uh, 90, 95%, you know. But we've, 125 yards with bait is a great cast. Mm-hmm. You've got to realize you're standing in the surf. you got that pounding mm-hmm. waves coming in on you. There's a lot of people around, you mm-hmm. know. And you're trying to chunk it out there, and um, mm-hmm. it's it's a uh, challenging. Well, I'm sure you know, there's so, an art to it. But yeah, but and that doesn't mean that you have to get in that hundred, hundred, and hundred twenty-five yard range to catch fish. Mm-hmm. But a lot of it is about distance, and we'll cover that in a minute too mm-hmm. with rigging and all. You know. Okay. Um, but yeah, rigging is a is a 
big part of it to get that distance. And mm -hmm. I've got this is just, and I think we'll be able to halfway okay. see it. Yeah. But you can see right here, I've got a real short leader. Okay. And this is a fish finder rig. See, this okay, will, gotcha. the fish will pick it up. This will be laying on the bottom like this, and pick, fish will pick it up like this and pull it, you know. Right. So he doesn't okay. feel the weight. Mm -hmm. But, see, all this is kind of what I call the package. Mm -hmm. you got a piece of bait on there, and, you, and it's all right here. Mm -hmm. When you cast that thing, it will, what like I call a helicopter, yeah, maybe. Okay. It can, but more, more than likely it's not. Okay. Because you got it so tight in there and all. Okay. You just created a something that you can, this kind of aerodynamic to a certain right, extent. Okay. Now, I've got this tied up short right here, but I'll right. put a bead on there just to, because okay. that way when this when this uh, fish finder rig, when this comes up to here, uh -huh. it won't bang against that swivel. Gotcha. But that's, and then this is, this is a, what we call a Hatteras drum rig, you know, mm -hmm. and this is the short, now, I tied this one on a red hook. Mm -hmm. I don't know that red makes any difference or not, but you okay. can just see how short that leader is. Oh, wow, yeah. That's There's not nothing to it, you know, really. Hardly yeah. between the... So it's all about, I'd say, good God, 75% of the time, it's all about distance, you know. Really? Now, other times, I mean, that doesn't mean that somebody can't catch them, you know, right off the beach. You can. I mean, you can chunk it right out sure. there into conditions or perfect you know and i mean there's a bunch of fish in there then you're going to mm -hmm. catch one you know okay but uh, so many times it's about distance now th and this is when i'll get into bait casting okay it, it, this is you oh can boy. catch that's my nemesis right here <laughs> bait caster oh boy <laughs> you can catch them on spinning now this is a custom uh -huh. rod okay i've had this rod for i don't know eight or ten years but mm -hmm. the good thing about a, a custom rod is that you can get it I'm short, mm -hmm. I've got short arms, mm -hmm. and I got it made for me. Okay. I'm left-handed, so I'm gonna hold it like this, of course, and I'm gonna grab it here. Okay. But, and same, same thing, This see, this has got a, a pistol grip on it. I'll put mm -hmm. two fingers right there behind it. Then mm -hmm. that way, I can clamp down on this spool right here really tight, because mm -hmm. when I come around, we're There's gonna a do a hatter's cast. Okay. A hatter's cast is a swing back. You've got maybe four or five feet of drop line, and mm -hmm. you're going to get it behind. You're going to swing it back, and on that very back mm -hmm. swing, you're going to bring it all forward and pull it around. Okay. Um, people can go. You can see. You can see this on the internet. You okay. know, the hatter's cast. Hatter's cast. That's hatter's the name cast. For it. Okay. Yeah. And then I'm using a 50 pound shock leader right here on this. Okay. And I'm going to tell you, this is great line right mm -hmm. here. Jason, just grab uh -huh. that line and, and grab it and okay. twist it around and pull on it just a little bit. I'm going to get, yeah, there you go. Now, Phil Hat gives. Oh, Phil, yeah, it's got some stretch to it. It's got a it. lot of stretch to it. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, it and sure that's does. good. That's good for okay. drum because, right, you know, you're you're putting pressure casting. You're putting pressure on that fish, you know, when you uh -huh. get them in the surf. And this is... Right. Um, we found that a lot of guys are using this is um, High Seas Black Widow. Okay. It's 50 pound test line. And okay. what I'll do, I'm having, I'll have eight to probably maybe 12 wraps of that uh -huh. on my reel. And then I'll go to, and we'll get into knots here in mm -hmm. a minute. And then right. this is where I'll tie up here. So I've got about eight or nine or 10, 12 wraps on my reel. And I'm up with my drop down and all. That's how much leader I got. Okay. And the good thing with that long a leader too, when you get a fish in the in the wake there in the surf, then you've got you can put your thumb on the spool, mm -hmm. and if you get him just right with 50 pound test line, you can put your thumb on the spool, and you get a wave coming, and you can just pull him up, it. you know, because yeah. he's going to be hard to get in right there in that surf, mm -hmm. you know. They are strong fish. They don't they won't run real hard on you as they will. They just fight you all the way in, you know, Man, especially right in the surf, you know. So so this is like 50, 50 pound shock leader and then what what are this you This is really uh now on the reel is twenty pound. Okay. Now I'm using this is Sakuma. Uh, I buy this down there from Joe Moore. Okay. Um, but just, another good line is uh Berkeley Prospect. Okay. This is twenty pound. Berkeley Pro Spec Pro Spec Spec Chrome. Okay. Spit it out. Uh Pro Spec Spec Chrome and 16 pound will test up to uh, 20, like 20 pounds. Okay. This this will, this is 20 pounds, but it'll break at 20 pounds. But right. I like this line, it's kind of soft. The Berkeley 
Prospect is a good line. A okay. lot of people use it. It's orange. I'm a real uh, fan of um, fluorescent lines, okay. especially if you're going to fish at night. During the daytime, you can see them good. You know, mm-hmm. everybody can see their lines and all. So, and, and this is just yeah. straight up mono, right? Or is straight this up mono. mono okay. Let me make a point right there. You bring up a good okay. point. No braid. No, no braid, braid at the point, you know. Only okay. only braid we'll use at the point is where we're throwing a lure for Spanish mackerel, and we'll use a fluorocarbon leader mm-hmm. and uh, in braided line. You know? Okay. But, um, and I'll okay. tell people while we're here too, Jason, mm-hmm. you need to learn your knots. Now, this knot okay. right here is what I call, this is a spider hitch. You can I see it's doubled up. I've never seen one of those. Yeah, I see that. Go on, online. Spider hitch. Spider hitch. Okay. And then this is, then the leader is tied up with what we call a no-name knot. No-name no name knot. No name knot. That's it. That so is the name of it. That is the no name <laughs> knot. <laughs> and then on my rig itself, I got four different, I told Jason earlier, I had four different knots. Okay. Now, there's That's a snail, snail knot. Okay, I've heard okay. of that. Yep. And then I got a polymer knot, knot right here. Okay, polymer, so, yep. Okay. But it, in saltwater fishing, you got your snail, your... Uh, uh, spider hitch, uh, polymer, no mm-hmm. name knot, uni knot, need to know how to tie a uni knot, and just a plain mm-hmm. old improved clinch knot, you know. Right, like what you'd call fisherman's knot. Fisherman's or, yeah. knot, exactly. Now, I know some of these you're using crimps instead of knots, I, or are you crimping over a knot? What is that? That That is, uh, no, that's just a crimp. I do crimp okay. that on. Yeah. For the, the reason for that, so it's, that's so hard to tie up. It's so short. It's so short. Yeah. So I'll use a... A crimp and that won't okay. affect the fishing any at all. They don't care. Mm-hmm. A drum mm-hmm. and I'll cover this too while we're at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, fluorocarbons, I love fluorocarbon line. I make a lot uh-huh. of my rigs for other fishing out of fluorocarbon. Sure. But on drum, they're not particular. They okay. don't care, you know. Especially yeah. in the surf zone where it's not super, super clear. Right. Exactly. So, you know, but yeah, I'll stay with this. Mm-hmm. Fluorocarbons are good, though. I mean, I, okay. I do like fluorocarbons, but don't worry about it on drum fishing, you know. Okay. We debated that for a long time, you know, is it worth it or not? Right. And fluorocarbons won't hold up like this. Like well, you're not going to get that like. kind of stretch. No. I mean, that right there is stretchy. Oh, that is. I mean, that's right. almost like a... We came across right. this about, it's been about four years ago, uh, one of the guys was using it. What is that? Okay. Uh, well, <laughs> actually, cool. it's Joe Moore that showed us okay. uh, some of it. Let's see what else I got. Um, bait. Let's cover bait. Yeah, let's talk about bait. So you cut baiting or cut you... baiting. Uh, the fresher, the better. Mullet um, that you can buy in the tackle shops. Good thing about the outer banks, we have great tackle shops down there. Mm-hmm. If there's any bait available, they'll have it. You know, mm-hmm. fresh. So all of them are trying to carry bait because they want you to come in and buy bait and buy tackle at the same right, time. Yeah, so exactly. if they got fresh bait, you're gonna buy a tackle. Sure. Um, I try not to if I can keep from it because. <laughs> Tackles high down there. Yeah, I'm sure it is. But yeah. If you <laughs> but, need something, you need something. But, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Right. But a fresh mullet, um, menhaden. If, okay. uh, if fresh menhaden, they'll get soft pretty fast, but menhaden's good. We call it bunker on the outer banks, you know. Okay. Um, even uh, uh, whiting that you catch in the surf. Okay. You know, Use we that. call them sea mullet on the outer banks. Right. Uh, but fresh whiting is is really good. You know, okay. a lot of guys swear by by fresh whiting. You know, really. Um, okay. But the the main thing is it's fresh. You know, and what we'll do, we'll scale it. Mm-hmm. And the reason for that, we think you get more smell. You know, you get really? scales off, you okay. get more smell. That's just. Okay, well, that does make sense. I mean, yeah, I know it does make it sense. Would, I don't yeah, know. It'd be like knocking that, that protective exactly. layer off and let the oils yeah. come out. So, let the oils come out exactly right. And then, what you'll do too is um, then we'll scale it, we'll cut it, and then we're really funny. I mean, you know, what it, <laughs> we'll, we'll t- I'll take scissors and I cut all the fins off of it. I mean, I have okay. that thing, it's just slick. I hook it on there. And I mean, you know, there's no resistance there okay. besides just the bait itself, you know, just like this. So that okay. might be funny, you know, to some people who don't well, know. But if you're trying to throw as far as you can everything that you can do yeah. to get it out there. And I've been there and done yeah. that where I've been sitting there days and I said, man, I'm about 10 yards short, you know. Yeah. The long bombers, they were hammering them. Yeah. Other days, 
it doesn't make any difference. But right. I mean, you're going to catch a fish or two along, but mm -hmm. a lot of times they'll hang them right out there on that one bar mm -hmm. that's out there 100, 125 yards, you mm -hmm. know. And like I say, if you got pound and surf and wind in your face, it's hard to make yeah, that cast at be. times, even for them. Well, you know, I've noticed even just fishing inshore, a lot of times you, I mean, you, you need to take those scissors and you need to cut off. Like a lot of people will leave the tail attached mm -hmm. to the tail section of the piece mm -hmm. of bait. And you're asking for trouble because that mm -hmm. tail just even, if you can get it where you want it, it just sits there and spins in a current mm -hmm. and you'll have everything wound up and it's just a major problem. Yeah. But And heads, I mean, don't don't forget about the head of them. Mm -hmm. If it's a, what we call a cob size mullet, mm -hmm. they're going to have a head that you can trim back mm -hmm. and a head is a great bait, uh, mm -hmm. on a, even on a sea mullet is a great bait for drum. They love a head. So how do you how do you like to hook a head? Do you hooking it up through the lip or I am. Yeah, that keep way. it from me and then on regular just cut bait I'll hook it through the back of it. You okay. Know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Something you said on the bait a minute ago just kinda of made me okay. want to circle back to it. You're talking about um the you know, changing it out often. Mm -hmm. Like how often? I would say every fifteen minutes, something okay. like that. If you're on a long drift and you're covering it, maybe it takes 20 minutes to make the drift, mm -hmm. then I drift it on through, you mm -hmm. know. But once I get through that drift, mm -hmm. I'm cranking up, throwing the bait off, rebaiting, walking back up, mm -hmm. I'm starting all over again. If okay. it's a, a narrow drift or if you're just sitting there, just say you have no current. I'm mm -hmm. not going to, because you can catch them with no current. Mm -hmm. But if you have current, in the right amount of it and light winds, man, mm -hmm. that's the ideal mm -hmm. scenario. I mean, we just love, we, mm -hmm. we love current, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but there again, you know, if it's, say it's flat and you're mm -hmm. just throwing out there and it's just sitting there, maybe about every 15 minutes cranking in. Mm -hmm. And another point too is you got to remember that sand is constantly churning out there mm -hmm. and that weight's sinking down in that sand and it's pulling that bait down. Mm -hmm. And every once in a while, I'll just kind of crank up and kind of give it the old heave ho just a little bit mm -hmm. and pull the sand up out of the, or mm -hmm. pull the uh, sinker up out of the sand. Right. Make sure Man, your bait's not I mean, getting I, buried. I don't know how many times I've sat there and right after that, bam. Yeah. Said, hey, yeah. you know, that, right. I don't know if that did it or not, but I got it up yep. visible for them or where they could smell it. Now, the, another thing, too, in the spring season, I mean, it, the water temperature, even in the low 60s, that's cold. So you need some waders, you know, okay. um, of course, jackets and all that. Mm -hmm. If you go over, and uh, a lot of times the late afternoon bite will go over into nighttime. And uh, drum really feed good at night if mm -hmm. you're a night fisherman. I'm not a... I don't enjoy night fishing that much. I'll do it because yeah. I want to catch fish. <laughs> right. But as far as the fun of it, it's not yeah. near as much fun. I like to see the fish, you know, and yeah. all, and I don't know. But but I will right. night fish. But if you're going to night fish, then you're going to need lights, and you sure. need some good lights. So I have a, right here, it's just okay. a, oh, it's yeah. a small <laughs> pin light. Sure, okay. And then I got a UV light, which you pick up. Okay. Uh, that one's, huh. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's going. Yeah, yeah, it's it's going. almost looks like a black light. No, yeah, it's probably it is. like that fluorescent line. It does. Like, yeah, that, okay, at yeah. night, you can see everybody's lines, you know, and okay. you're still fishing right. in the crowd, you know. So, yeah, get you a couple good lights, you know, mm -hmm. and this is even a cap light that I have here that oh, I yeah. put on okay. my cap, you know, that maybe I just want to do mm -hmm. something right there, you know, rigging or something wise. So, but mm -hmm. if you're going to night fish, you know, then. And, and the thing that we got to watch it uh, with the outer banks is, it's it's the nesting season for the birds and the turtles. Okay. So they're starting to put closures up. Mm -hmm. You know, um, May first is the your vehicle has to be off the beach at nine o'clock. Can't mm -hmm. come back on till six in the morning. Oh. But you can park at the point. You can go park up at the uh, fish cleaning tables and walk back out. Pretty good walk. You know. Mm -hmm. Especially if you've got waders on. Oh, know. right. Yeah, it'd I be mean, a hike. It, it's a hike, you know. But people <laughs> do it. I've done it, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, so, but if you're out there fishing at night, and, I mean, if you're out there and it gets in the night, we'll, we'll talk about some courtesy things, you know, a mm -hmm. little bit. Um, when you get through, turn your lights off or 
whatever you need to do to where your lights won't come on when you crank up and shine your lights out across the water. Guys really get tore up about that. They say it'll run the fish off, uh, and it might. You know, I'm, might, not, yeah. I'm not going to say it won't. You know, it's probably, mm -hmm. but it's just a courtesy thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Turn your lights off and then get turned around and then turn your lights on, you know, where you mm -hmm. can see where you're going. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. the the whole thing with the, with the point fishing is pay attention, throw out, stay in front of your bait, the drift's going, follow, follow in front. You know, here's your line going out like this and it's going to be arcing around because you got that. Mm -hmm. South to uh, north, I call it, or west to east drift. Mm -hmm. So your aren't, lines arced around like this, but you can kind of tell where your where your bait is or where your sinker and all is out there. But stay in front of it, then that way you stand less of a chance of getting tangled up with other people. And and I'll just say, don't be intimidated about the point. There's mm -hmm. a lot of people out there, but there's a lot of people just like us. Mm -hmm. I mean. Everybody's still learning. I'm mm -hmm. still learning. I've mm -hmm. done it a lot, but I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. But just do what everybody else is doing, and you'll be fine. I mean, if everybody's walking mm -hmm. up here and casting out, walk, walk up there and cast mm -hmm. out. Maybe you can't cast as far as they can. That's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, throw it out there, but stay in front of your line, you know. Mm -hmm. Following on down. If somebody's got a fish on, watch. When they're coming down, you know, put your rod down where they can get over you or pick it up where they can get under you or whatever. Mm -hmm. But... It's, it's all about courtesy there mm -hmm. again, you know, and Just enjoying paying attention you know, you can, it, yes, it can be intimidating. I, and I hear people say, I don't like that. It's too intimidating out mm -hmm. there for me. Yeah. It's hey, kind of, it know. can get shoulder to shoulder sometimes. It or can. So here, yeah. It can. And, but, and if it's really good, the fish can get stretched out over a big area. You mm -hmm. know, they can get really tight too. And especially when they start getting closures up. And here comes the fish down the beach from the south. They're coming up. Everybody's standing there at the closure. They mm -hmm. want to get into the fish when they, and, and they got to realize they're going to come on up there. I mean, they're they're not going to stop just because that closure, mm -hmm. bird closure is right there. The right. fish are not going to stop right there. They're going to come on down the beach. Just get sure. your bait out there and you'll be okay. You'll yeah, get they're, one. They're going to get to you eventually. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. anyway, it's, uh, it's all good, you know. Um, one bad news thing <laughs> that uh -huh. I got to stress is uh -huh. it's not all fun because they're sharks and a lot. Oh of them. yeah, shark man. Oh, I mean I'm telling you, yeah. that you saw the that one. I old. I got that laying on the floor of my my rig tackle box. Mm -hmm. There's 24 rigs that I've already got rigged up, mm -hmm. and I'll go through those and probably more, probably another whole box full uh, before the end of the season. But sharks can get in there mm -hmm. and it. We're not using um, uh, wire leaders because we don't want to catch them. You know, we want them to bite us off. You know, right. so I well, mean, this short, this short little rig right here. Uh oh, and then tangled well, it up. Anyway, <laughs> we done to but anyway, <laughs> this right here, <laughs> right. you know, is all mono. So okay. you know, they're going to bite you off right there, or they're right. going to bite you off up here, and then mm -hmm. we got a new rig to put on there. You know, yeah. or I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. actually have another rod rigged up, ready to go. Because yeah. you don't know, you might catch a shark, bite you off, but the drum are there. So if you can sure. go back and rig up, or you got another rod mm -hmm. rigged up, then you're, you're ready to go and get back mm -hmm. out. Because a lot of times, some fish will come in and they'll come in real fast, mm -hmm. and they'll be 10, 12, 15, 20 caught, and then they're mm -hmm. gone, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, so you got to be ready for them, you know. But well, that, that actually makes me think of a question. Uh, and, and maybe you already answered this with the drifting, but it's so like when I think surf fishing, I think about going out there with a beach cart and some sand spikes and three or four rods and setting them up and you know, space them out. So what you're doing for this type of fishing is something different. You're one rod and you're moving with the rod down mm -hmm. the beach. And is that's that correct? You brought up a good point. Okay. You can go out there and sand spike if you, during the, say, morning 10 9 10 o'clock you know mm -hmm. to three or four o'clock but once if the drum if it's drum season be courteous enough mm -hmm. that once the drum bite starts get your stuff up you know and join in join in with the drum guys yeah, but with don't leave your rod, rods yeah. in rod holders because there's nothing more no more aggravating and you think about it mm -hmm. is you get a fish on like I say these are 40 and 50 pound fish they're mm -hmm. big fish you know citation fish and here's a guy, and they're first thing they're going to do, that drum is going to do, he's going to take off down the beach in the current. Mm 
Mm-hmm. So you got a guy down below you, he's up on the bank and he's got a 12 foot rod up in the air mm-hmm. and you got a fish on and you're over him and you got a, and he's back at the truck. Right. Yeah. And playing on his phone. Playing on his phone. <laughs> yeah. Playing on his phone. Right. Hey, hey, think you can drop the rod. What, what? You got a fish on? I mean, right. Really? It's hard, I mean, yeah. You know, it's hard, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yes, I got it's a It's a little bit too intense of a fishing. Now, if you were just sitting there fishing for like, and you know, other times of year, you're sitting there, you're catching exactly. whiting and croakers and exactly. spots and stuff. You could probably get by with that. You can get by with that. And you can do it in April and May mm-hmm. during the middle of the day, you know, mm-hmm. if, if there's no, but once the drums start biting, do the cur- do everybody cursing, and just mm-hmm. pull your stuff up. And like I say, join sure. in, you know, yep. get in on the drum bite. There's, there is an alternative if you don't care for the point. Mm-hmm. Um, the point can be intimidating, mm-hmm. but uh, you can catch. There are some drum that are caught at Hatteras Inlet, which would be um, from Buxton to be about 15 miles south down where the ferry is. This is where okay. the uh, Hatteras Island ferry is. You can drive down there. You're going to have to walk out on the beach. You're not mm-hmm. going unless they've changed things this spring. Okay. But it's all about parking what we call on the pole road and walking out to the inlet. They, I mean, I've caught drum down there. You know, they catch drum down there. They're probably not going to catch near as many as what we catch at the point. But Mm -hmm. you can get away from the crown. Now, the other alternative where they do catch a lot of drum is over at Okokoke. But you got the had you got the Hatteras Inlet Ferry that you got to ride over. Right. You got to wait on that thing. I mean, the line is terrible at times, mm-hmm. um, and you got an hour and a half uh, ride on the ferry. Then you got another twenty minutes down to uh, Okokoke Inlet. But they mm-hmm. catch a lot of drum down there, and mm-hmm. it's not crowded, so you can get okay. away from the crowd. So mm-hmm. there is drum fishing on the outer banks, other okay. than the point. But okay. Yeah. What so, about like south of Ochre Coke? Like if you, if you go down, um, like to the Core Sound area, like if you get down mm-hmm. below, like Cedar Island, kind of down mm-hmm. in that area, did anybody do anything down there? Much, um, or? You, you can go over on a, a good friend of ours, he goes to Portsmouth in Portsmouth, the spring, right? That's but he's got to take a ferry over, and right. Portsmouth really got tore up several years ago by mm-hmm. that. I can't remember the hurricane you uh-huh. know when Okokoke was tore up really bad okay. um uh Portsmouth got I mean the a lot of little inlets mm-hmm. washed through so you can't uh, go out on the beach you know and, and navigate as good as oh. what you could but he he's he catches drum over there but yet you got to set up appointment and go on the ferry that's a private ferry goes over there mm-hmm. right. now look out they won't catch many big drum in the spring mm-hmm. they'll catch some in the fall you know but uh so you know yeah. kind of surprised me when you you and i were talking and we're talking about catching these big drum in the spring because usually you hear people talking about that and it's it's a fall thing you know they're fishing inshore like up mm-hmm. noose river and oriental and all that mm-hmm. and they're catching them you know they're sort of catching them on their way back out mm-hmm. but i just i guess i didn't realize this was a thing that you know you can go yes, target these springtime fish that's a cool fishery it is it is and all these fish that's what they're doing they're migrating into that they're either uh, when you had us if they're going north, they're going to Chesapeake Bay or Oregon mm-hmm. Inlet. Anything south of there, probably they're going back into Pamico Sound, and uh, and I'll be at Oregon mm-hmm. Inlet in August and September catching them when they're spawning. In catching there. them again, <laughs> but that's boat, that's boat fishing though. Then right, but it's a lot of fun too. That's yeah. another subject, you know. Right. Well, that's something I'm looking forward to trying at some point. I may not be able to get on this, you know, this year doing this, but yeah, yeah I've. I've got it's on my fishing bucket Baby. list is to catch one of these big drum. I think to to date, my biggest drum has only been it's not been a citation. Citation has been like you know, maybe 30, 30 yeah. some inches. So but they are, they're uh, hard pullers yeah. though. They I mean, really you know, are. I mean, you catch one in the upper thirty. Man. Sometimes I wonder if, if I said, man, this, this, that's a good this one. Yeah, strong fish. They're still young. You get them out them old ones up in the. Mm-hmm. Uh, 45, 46, 47 inches, mm-hmm. uh, they got a lot of weight to them. They, they pull, do. But they they got a lot of heft. <laughs> yeah, they do. That's, a, yeah, that's the good. passion of it. You know, it but, sure is. They're fun yeah. to catch, and, and the, the small ones, I love to eat them. You know, the mm-hmm. little slop slice, mm-hmm. those are some some of our favorite uh, favorite yeah. fried fish to, to eat, so mm-hmm. those small reds. I'll, I'll keep a... Uh, I'll keep a, a puppy drum, you know, mm-hmm. that 18 to 27, mm-hmm. you know, because I like them. They are Grilling good. them and all, you know. They really great. are good. But, um, yeah, and we will, as the season is 
April goes into May and it starts tapering down, then mm-hmm. it will still catch drum, but there'll be it might be what we call the yearlings in the thirties, mm-hmm. and then we'll catch more of the slot fish. You know, okay. then the big ones have already uh, headed north or mm-hmm. you know doing their thing. You know, but mm-hmm. it's a, it's a good fishery, and mm-hmm. of course we we can do it again sometime. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about the rest mm-hmm. of the year. You know, or um, right. uh, the fall. There's some drum fishing in the fall. Not as good as the spring, not right. at the point, you know. Okay. But it's still, well, I won't say at the point. We catch a lot right. of yearlings. This past fall, we caught a lot of yearlings and um, uh, slot fish late mm-hmm. September, 1st of October. Mm-hmm. But anyway. Yeah, just you and I were talking. I think one of the, the cool things that you were sharing that I guess I didn't think about, I always think surf fishing. I think, you know, maybe late summer, fall, early winter. Because uh, that's when I've always been when I've tried to do it. But w- from what you were saying, that I mean, there really there are a lot of different species that pass through different times of the year, and so like when the mm-hmm. big drum kind of wrap up, you know, you're gonna have there's other species that you can sort of target throughout the rest of the you know spring and on into the summer. It is. It's a it's a great fishery down there year round, and and I enjoy the you know, like I say we'll cover that another time, but. When we get into late May and June, the mm-hmm. big pompano. I mean, I'm mm-hmm. the five and we catch five and six pound pompano really? in the Outer Banks. Oh man, I mean, that's a big pompano. That is a big pompano, <laughs> <laughs> yes. And yeah, yeah, that's boy. specialized fishing, too, you know, to a certain okay. extent. But they don't, they're about like the drum, they don't stay around too long. And mm-hmm. then you'll catch what the, I guess the resonant pompano that'll be, you know, more the pound, you know, sure, yes, yeah, but still, ones. hey, that's fun. Yeah, they're all fun. I mean, if it's got a tail on it, I like to catch it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not super picky. <laughs> and a mouth. If it's right, got a tail exactly. on a mouth, you know, we're good. Uh, well, um, listen, I know we've covered a lot of ground here talking about the tackle and the rigs and the different you know, strategies and debates and the courtesies and all that kind of stuff. Um, but is there anything that maybe I haven't set you up to talk about or um, anything on the when, the where, the tackle, the rigs, the strategies or um, – or maybe as much as anything and one thing that we didn't talk about is if you get if you get the right tackle and all don't wait to go to the beach and test it i mean go get you uh we've got a church near the house that they've got you no know, 250 yard you know his old baseball field and mm-hmm. uh, we go over there and practice we we'll practice casting you know really? year round you know uh, so we're yeah. tech with me i mean i don't have it like i used to i mean in my arms mm-hmm. now so it's going to come from technique so I'm all the time working on my technique, you know, just to okay. be able to maintain where I'm at, you know. Yeah. And um, but and then just being ready, you know, when the season yeah. gets here, have your rigs tied up and yeah. have new line and, you know, mm-hmm. you greased all your bearings and all that. Yeah. I mean, all my reels. Are, and I'll have, um, I mean, just how serious, I mean, I've got four four reels, four mm-hmm. drum reels. So if, if I get spooled by a shark, Mm-hmm. I'm putting another one on, and I'm back fishing. You're you know? back into it. But yeah. I'm not going to throw back out and into the shark fest, you know, necessarily. <laughs> and I'll, you can help it. <laughs> yeah. I, might, I might, you rig back up and say, well, somebody else can catch the next shark. And they're right. I'm going to move down here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a thing that we look forward to every year. We're, mm-hmm. We haven't gone yet, but we're really getting close, mm-hmm. you know. It, it's getting time, mm-hmm. you know. And, uh, so, okay. Yeah. I hope to see everybody down there. I do. There's a, uh, and I'll say it again, don't be intimidated. There's a lot of nice people down there, mm-hmm. and they're willing to help. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, all you got to do is ask, you know. Right. Just, you know, and people won't speak up sometimes. They'll just sit there, you know, and mm-hmm. what are you doing, you know, what are you doing? Yeah. Well, just ask. They'll tell you, you know, right. more than likely. I will. I, I fish, mm-hmm. I mean, not drum fishing, but. Uh, fishing for whitings and and just be catching the heck out of them. Guys sitting beside them and never asked me what I was doing, so I didn't tell them. You know? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's it. But anyway, That's funny. It, it's all fun. Yeah. You know? No, I, I found that people you, for the most part willing to willing to help you if you, especially sure. if you're there and they see you trying to do it. Now you, you know, sometimes you get people on the internet. You know, they're kind of wanting to to know you know, get free information. But like, if you got somebody down there and they're invested and they've bought the tackle and invested the time and they're down there and they're actually putting in the effort mm-hmm. to do it, 
you know, I don't think any of us, for the most part, like mind giving somebody a tip no. or, you know, be like, hey, you know, why don't you tie that this way or, you know, throw out, try throwing out a little farther or, you know, yeah. there's. I've people given people helpful. rigs before. I make all my rigs where it be mm-hmm. for fishing for whiting or papano or drum. I, mm-hmm. I mean, I'll give people a rig, you know, try it. Mm-hmm. You try know, that maybe out. it'll work for you. Maybe it won't, you know. Yeah. But everybody's got their different. This this is just how we do it, you know, how how we enjoy doing it. So, mm-hmm. well, you know, but like I say, we look forward to it, look forward mm-hmm. to seeing people down there. And yeah. Got a lot of friends and, yep. and uh, get That's to hang good. out with uh, some uh, happy mm-hmm. people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get away from That's the, it. Get not... away from the real world and get That's, down there. It's kind of like call a... it. Uh, God's paradise. That's you know, it. Uh, well, it's, it's like the saying, you know, I've never seen a sad person eating an ice cream cone. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like that with fishing, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it has a tendency to make people happy. Yeah, it does. Yeah, unless it you does. tangle them with a shark. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> well, uh, uh, one thing I did want to ask you about before we close, and, and you, maybe you did cover this already, but you're talking about some of the different, um, like the websites and so forth where you get information. Mm-hmm. I think you'd mentioned one was the Red Drum, the Red Drum Tackle website site where you can get mm-hmm. the surface temperature mm-hmm. i'm glad um, you asked that because i did miss that another okay. good one is on casting it would be uh tommy farmer okay uh, tommy uh became a world champion caster okay but the reason he did that is because he was tired of getting beat going to the point and people were casting father <laughs> okay. he was he catching fish you know? okay so he became a world champion caster mm-hmm. we actually took um uh, casting lessons from Tommy. He, mm-hmm. he gives casting lessons. But you can look at his videos, his online videos, mm-hmm. and develop your own technique. Mm-hmm. To a, and and we, we picked up a lot of pointers from him. There's four of us and went down to Wilmington mm-hmm. uh, a good while ago and, uh, mm-hmm. and took a lesson uh, from Tommy. But since then, we've all kind of developed our own styles, you know. Mm-hmm. But Tommy's a good one. Um, and he's got okay. and, and he's got a good factory made rod drum rod it, it, okay. his rods are cast pro series rods they're they're not a custom rod but they're not your factory rod they're kind of in between okay um, so you can have a you can have a not and i've got good many of tommy's rods i like mm-hmm. them you know um that like i say this one is a cts this is a custom 12 foot rod mm-hmm. 1205 so it's rated and i didn't cover that it's mm-hmm. rated six to ten ounces so the sweet spot is eight ounces. Mm-hmm. So I'll throw a seven and bait is about eight ounces, you know, mm-hmm. on this rod a good bit. You okay, know. and that puts the right amount of load on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Your- Not that it, it'll handle uh, 10 ounces, but you're loading it up pretty good on a, mm-hmm. on a six to 10 rated. Now they make, now Dwight, my son's got a Tommy, one of his rods, custom built, mm-hmm. rated eight to 12. Okay. But Dwight's can handle it, you know. Yeah. I mean, he, he'll He's a young it. buck. Yeah, yeah, he he's young. Sling I mean, that he, he's only forty. It's only forty. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Tommy's uh, websites are good. Um, mm-hmm. uh, let's see, good. Um, all the tackle shops down there, Trade Winds at Oak Coke Oak is a. Uh, you can get fishing information there. Um, Frank and Friends mm-hmm. at Avon that you can get fishing information off that one and then uh, of course red drum they're not posting a lot right now because there's not a lot going on mm-hmm. and also um uh, frisco rod and gun you know that's another mm-hmm. tackle shop down there they give you a daily post and they'll put mm-hmm. some water temperatures on there too mm-hmm. on theirs okay so um cool but uh i don't know let's see joe moore is a he's a personal friend of ours he lives in Avon. It, you you can go to his website He's, this is a Kios reel here. I didn't talk about reels. Mm-hmm. Real quick. This is a Kios. This is a F-15. We like these reels. A lot of people will use pin um, phantoms. Okay. And that's a good reel. Joe sells these at Kios in Avon, mm-hmm. you know. Okay. Um, you can order them from him. You know, you can go buy a shop and pick them up or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we do a lot with Joe. Joe's mm-hmm. in his 80s. He's he, He's kind of fished out, but he's mm-hmm. a great individual. He, mm-hmm. okay. I go by there and just brainstorm with him. Sometime, right. You know, <laughs> get a okay. lot of information. So, yeah, yeah those are some websites. Well, People good. Go no, I appreciate you sharing that. It would be very yeah. helpful. And um, if, I can, if I can link some of that in the description, like below yeah. in the video, I'll try to do that on the YouTube version anyway. Okay. Um, 
Well, listen, I think this has been great. It's been a lot of really good information. I appreciate you coming and hanging out today. Yeah, and uh, I feel um, yeah, inspired to at least like, yeah, I, get I feel like I could at least give it a fighting chance. Like, you know, <laughs> it wouldn't be, I wouldn't be completely starting from zero if I were to try it now. But uh, yeah, no, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here oh, today, yeah. Glenn. Uh, it's been a pleasure. And, um, Again, I'll just I'll link that information down below. Um, again, just don't forget to like and subscribe. Check us out uh, if you're watching us on YouTube. Don't forget to you know, jump over to the Apple Podcasts. Uh, send us an email. Um, you know, connect with us. Let us know where you're watching from. If there's anything you'd like to see on the channel, and with that, um, we'll go ahead and sign off. <laughs>